I'd call it our co-main event, but she is a heavyweight champion of the Breeders' Cup. That is the six-year-old Bay Mare, Goldakova. She tries to become the first four-time Breeders' Cup winner. The TVG Breeders' Cup Mile. Goldakova is the only horse in the history of the event to win three Breeders' Cup races. So the time has arrived for Goldakova, the TVG Breeders' Cup Mile. And before Goldakova, the last four winners of this race were American-based and race, but she has just dominated this thing. A look at the full field and the current odds of those who will be stepping up to the plate to try to knock out Goldakova. It includes Gio Ponti, one of our American champions, American race champions at six to one. You see Courageous Cat and Gio Ponti were both Breeders' Cup Challenge winners. And they were both second to Goldakova in recent runnings of this Breeders' Cup mile. As was by word in his career, Byward, who is uh, European-based. And there's Sydney's Candy. But it's all about the leading lady, the six-year-old Goldakova. Her career in this race, it's a no-hitter, Randy. 2008, she beat Kip DeVille. She pulled the double in 2009 out at Santa Anita to beat Courageous Cat, who she'll see again today. Last year, she became the first horse ever to win three Breeders' Cup races. Zenyatta had a chance to win three and failed. And now the unthinkable, the possibility of four in a row. Well, good horses win races, but great horses win races even when they face adversity. And Goldakova certainly has had that since her inaugural winning in 2009. Well, look at this one. Goldakova in the blue silks has a perfect trip. A couple of links behind the pace setter on the inside, a perfect turf trip under jockey Olivier Pellier. Now she continues around there and she gets to the turn for home, the top of the stretch. She has that same trip. She's still parked in right behind the leaders, looking for a spot to go, still a perfect turf trip. Olivier Pellier sees a very tiny seam. The tremendous burst that she has, that Goldakova has, enables her to make almost any spot, any hole, no matter how small, here she does it. She bursts, and now she goes on to win, even though she only has about 100 yards left. She wins by daylight. I mean, this is the easiest kind of win. Now we go to the next year, totally opposite. She comes to Santa Anita again, but because she's drawn wide, Olivier Pellier tries to take her back and put her over, but he ends up almost eight lengths behind in the first first turn six links more than he was the year before he continues around the race and when he hits the top of the stretch turning for home he is still almost five links a little over five links behind unheard of making up that much ground in the mile at Santa Anita on that turf course yet not only does she make it up she makes it up with ease and again she is going to win by daylight what an impressive performance two totally different trips now we go to the next year Last year here at, at, at Churchill Downs, in order not to have the same thing happen in the first turn as she did last year, being almost nine links behind, he says, let me leave her five links behind, but I'm almost five or six links off the rail. You can't win at Churchill Downs being that wide, unless your name's Golikova. She continues around the turn. She goes to, for the top of the stretch. Again, how wide she is, almost six paths wide on both turns. We just saw Union Rags cost him the race, but what does she do? She gears it up again, a Pellier grabs her and, and, and kicks on her a little bit. Doesn't even look like she has a chance, but here she comes. She wins so many different ways, and, and this year she's drawn inside, so she's going to get a perfect trip again, I believe. And there is Goldakova as she is making her way in front of the clubhouse there and getting ready to turn into the tunnel and head to the paddock. Let's talk about some of the competition she will face here this year in the TVG Breeders' Cup mile. There is the three courageous cat who is ridden by the veteran Patrick Valenzuela, and P-Val is kind enough to join us. <laughs> Patrick, 
Hey, Jerry, how are you? Good. You, you have a horse that, that ran a credible race up in Canada last time, but my belief is he's a little better at two turns than he is one turn. But he's a speedy sort. Where do you put him early in the race today? Well, no matter where he's going to be, Jerry, I'm going to try to get him to relax and, and have something left for the stretch. It is a soft turf today, and you've got to have some horse coming through the stretch. Uh, I see that gets stormy, and uh, Sydney's candy have a lot of speed, and my horse is very rateable, so um, if I have to, I'll try to lay third and just relax him the best I can and get him to finish run by him at the head lane and open up. Can you resist the temptation to look over your shoulder and peek where Goldakova is throughout this race? I'm not going to worry about Goldakova. I know I've got a great turf horse. He's, uh, to me, the best turf horse in the country as far as, as, as a mile, and uh, he's run some incredible races this year. And, I just look forward to him uh, redeeming himself as a top top horse in the in the country. Thanks for joining us. Good luck, Pat. Thank you, Jerry. Patrick Valenzuela was a Ford Courageous Cat when he won the Shoemaker Mile. And as you can see them in the paddock, Bill Mott saddling Courageous Cat. Let's check in with Nick Luck. Well, Joe, there can't be any more of a privilege if you're doing this job than to walk into the paddock with a Breeders' Cup heroine, a three-time Breeders' Cup heroine. Here is Goldakova flanked by Thierry and Regis, who have looked after her her entire career. And this is the final time that they will take her into a parade ring to be saddled up by her trainer, Freddie Head. She has been applauded, cheered by her loving American audience all the way here. It's not quite the reception that Zenyatta received last year, but it's not far from it. And as a European on American soil, it must make these gentlemen very proud indeed. She stops and pauses to receive her public. Here she is, Goldikova, looking for the forepeat, and she'll receive a warm round of applause as she enters the paddock. Joe? Sorry, Jimmy. Thank you, Nick. Not quite what we saw last year with Zenyatta. There's a great appreciation for Goldikova, but when Zenyatta came through that tunnel, last year it was like Muhammad Ali in the early 70s heading out to a heavyweight fight that's a point we're going to talk about a little more in terms of the respect that Goldakova deserves compared to perhaps what she has gotten in recent years in the shadow of Zenyatta Kenny and Hank we just talked about in the last race in the juvenile trying to beat an overwhelming favorite what about Goldakova here in the mile well it worked in the last race uh, I, I think it's going to be a case where you root for and bet against I mean as Nick said it really is a privilege to be here to see this horse do something that's never been done before and I have this horse placed correctly in pick threes and pick fours as a single as she should be but she may very well pull off the same thing nothing says she won't but I think there's a couple of chances if you want to say she has an off day she's down on the inside the what ifs of horse racing come into play I'll try strong suit I'll even try the two Zofni at about 33 to 1, but still appreciative of what Goldakova might do. You know, she doesn't really have off days, even when she loses. They say she might have lost a step. I'm not sure I believe it. She's run against tougher competition over there. I see one little irony here, and that is the connections of, uh, from last year and uh, from Zenyatta. John Sheriff's the trainer, and of course the Mosses have a horse in the air. Number four, Mr. Commons. They're very high on a possible upsetter, but I'm using it in an exact as $50 exact with Golden Cove on top and $20 the other way, and I'll take Golden Cove with Sydney's Candy and Strong Sue. The last British export that got a reception like Zenyatta in this country was the Beatles. Uh, this horse should have gotten a better reception, Joe. I agree with you, Kenny, but I don't think they'll hold back if she makes history in a few minutes as the jocks have left the jockey's room and they look to meet up with the trainers before taking a leg up. And Freddie Head prepares Goldakova for history. What magical memories will Goldakova offer this year? Her 2010 win in the mile was so outstanding, it sent her groom, Terry Blaze, following her to the finish line with flag in hand. It was just a thrilling scene as she came home and Terry could not contain himself, his love of the mare. So what will she do for an encore? You gotta stick around to find out. I would describe Goldakova's success as remarkable. 
for her to win three Breeders' Cups, let alone go for four. I mean, it's an incredible feat. I've never seen it before. It's very amazing, I mean, very amazing horse. It's a lot of fun to, to watch, incredible, incredible merit. Gold Dakota, a true champion, three Breeders' Cup wins. Unbelievable, it's unbelievable that any horse could be going for four in a row and this filly to travel back from France, back to America again. It's just pretty incredible. She's a very special filly. I think she's just a phenomenal filly. I mean, she is just a phenomenal horse. Forget Philly, she's awesome. She is beloved, admired, respected. She is the six-year-old bay mare from France, Goldakova, and this will be the last race of her career, the TVG Breeders' Cup Mile. And as she crosses that finish line first, she will make Breeders' Cup history as the first four-time winner. Goldakova right now is six to five. Gio Ponti is five to one. Courageous Cat. We talked to Patrick Valenzuela. Eight to one, as is Strong Suit. This is a danger to Goldakova right here. Strong Suit, another one coming from over there from England, from Newmarket. Uh, at least that was where he ran his last race. A very impressive win. Uh, excellent rating over there by the rating services, and I think this horse has a, a big shot. Yeah, the question with Strong Suit is can he get the mile? You know, and seven eighths is, is kind of his bullseye distance. So he's going to be stretching to go. He's never go gone more than a mile, he's gone a mile one time. But he's never gone around left-handed turns. Uh, they were trying to get on the track the other morning to practice that a little bit. They were refused entrance to it. He was one of the horses that didn't get on. But those are the only two press question marks. He's got enough tactical speed from where he is to make a good trip into the first turn. It's just a question of can he get the mile. There is the five, Gio Ponte, who we have seen in so many big races through the years here in the States. His last win, the Shad Shadwell Mile, was a... a duplication of his win last year but to me visually it wasn't as impressive I never thought he was going to even win at mid stretch and then with 75 or 100 yards to go he just kicked in and, and got the money talk about being overshadowed Goldacova's won almost seven million dollars Gio Ponti's won six this morning when I was looking through the past performances this is the horse that I started settling on right here by word who's a veteran 14 seven wins in 14 races and has been in so tough over in Europe with the likes of Rip Van Winkle and twice over in Goldakova a few times. Well, she, the last time they met back earlier this summer, she beat him by seven lengths. Uh, the question is a byword. He's backing down from longer distances. Can he get up in the race quick enough? And 22-year-old Maxine Guillon was the jockey yesterday on announce who had to be scratched before the filling and mare turf when she bumped into the ambulance and was cut. Parade is brought to you by Equibase, the Thoroughbred Industries' official database for racing and wagering information. So this is the last time that Goldakova will go out to the track. She leads us off, and she's taken the same exact path of prep races that worked so well in the past. Wertheimer brothers own her. Former Breeders' Cup winning jockey Freddie Head trains her brilliantly, and Olivier Pellier knows how to push the buttons. You almost think it should almost be like a... Um, a battle for everybody that's been involved with her so so why not we'll tell you that terry blaze is the groom and the head groom is bruno hewitt and the farrier is nicholas Rakow. and everybody has made the trip over here again and we're very thankful for that and there is a wonderful reception for Goldakova as she was announced in front of the clubhouse in grandstand cool moore has already had a huge day trainer aiden o'brien here is zoffany number two this one written by ryan moore 12th and 8th last two starts has had some respiratory bleeding problems even with lasix last time out but you can bet if he's back in here cool moore thinks they've got that straightened out courageous cat is the three the y gods and william farish own the five-year-old as the sun is starting to take that angle there and the lights have come on here at Churchill Downs two years ago courageous cat took a shot at this race had the lead at the top of the stretch before Goldicova ran him down this summer he won the shoemaker at Hollywood Park 
Number four is Mr. Commons, trained by John Sheriffs of Zenyatta fame. Different silks than you saw from Zenyatta. That's because Mr. Commons is owned by the St. George Farm Racing Partners. Mike Smith, though, Zenyatta's jockey, is aboard. There is Gio Ponte, who earns the EQ from Equibase for his speed figure last time out. Gio Ponte, second in this race last year, a three-time Eclipse Award winner. has had a sensational career for Christoph Clement and owner Shane Ryans. The mile wasn't really in the plans for number six to get stormy until he settled nicely off the pace with Garrett Gomez last time in the Shadwell Turf Mile at Keeneland. Finished second to Gio Ponte, and now here he is, but he's a long shot. Number seven is Geronimo coming into this race off a good-looking win in the Oak Tree Mile. DJ Wright's the owner, originally from Kentucky. He coached the trainer Michael Pender when Pender was a Pop Warner football player. There is Byword, Judmont Farms, Maxime Guion, trainer Andre Fab, a half-brother to the Philly Proviso, who finished seventh in this race last year. Byword, a winner of his last two in France. The nine is Court Vision. He was fifth in this race behind Goldacova last year. Last time out, he ran third in the Woodbine Mile. Robbie Alvarado is the jock on Court Vision. Here is your likely pace setter. Next in line, number 10, Sydney's Candy, owned by the Windstar Farm, trained by Todd Pletcher. Johnny Velasquez already won a couple of Breeders' Cup races. Did that yesterday. Sydney's Candy, third in the Shadwell Mile after setting the pace last time. Let's look at the 11, Strong Suit, the three-year-old Strong Suit, who is a Group 2 winner from England. And the trainer is Richard Hannon. The jockey is Richard Hughes. That is Richard Hannon's son-in-law. Compliance. There he is. And there is Strong Suit. There is Strong Suit. He's the owner, warming up. Owner David Redver says he's spending most of his nights going to sleep dreaming of beating Goldakova. See if that happens. The 12 compliance officer and Alex Solis, a winner of five straight races, but all against New York bred competition. And Turalor is your 13. It's one of three of his last four, including the last two with Le Peru in the saddle. Top courageous cat by a neck in the Woodbine Mile. So the big question about Goldakova coming into this race, has she lost a step? This is the first time she's come to the U.S. off back-to-back -back defeats. Second place finishes in her last two starts in France. I, I don't think she has, really. If you look at the racing form where she finishes, maybe you could make that case. But the numbers, the speed numbers, the time form ratings indicate that she's not only as good as she ever has been, she might be slightly better. It has been a wonderfully exciting afternoon at the Breeders' Cup. But the two best are yet to come. The superstar, Goldakova, looking for four straight. And then the $5 million classic. Let's keep the good times rolling here under the Twin Spires. Old Mayor goes after history here. A four-time Breeders' Cup winner is what Goldakova wants to be. Six to five for Goldakova. Freddie Head is the trainer, the only person to ride and train a Breeders' Cup winner. Let's check in with Nick. We'll get to Nick in just a moment as we continue to look here at the current odds in the mile. Gio Ponte remains the second choice at 5-1. to one. Yeah, I was talking to Freddie Head yesterday and I asked him, what, it, what, what difference is there in Goldakova, if any? He said really the only difference is now she settles back a little further in her races than she did at one time. So uh, he said her kick is still the same. Uh, her, her turn of foot is still the same. So expect her maybe not to be as close, even with an inside draw as she was three years ago, but mid-pack, something like that, but do expect that same Goldakova punch. 23 years ago, Freddie had piloted Miesk to victory in the Breeders' Cup in the mile. Nick? Very special moments for Freddie Head, flanked by the Wertheimer brothers. Freddie, you've just saddled this marvelous mare for the final time. Describe that feeling to us. Well, you know, a lot of um, very, uh, well, I'm, for the moment, I'm very relieved, great relief. I'm very happy with her. I think she's very well. So we'll see, we'll see. We'll see afterwards. For the moment, don't talk. Is she as good as she was? Are you confident that she can bring what she brought the last three years? I think so. I think she looks very well, and I'm very happy with the way she's been training. So um, let's hope for the best. Gentlemen, you've been fantastic sportsmen. Thank you very much. 
You know, it's interesting, uh, and you, you hear from Freddie Head, he's relieved. You just sit back, you don't talk, you hope for the best, but uh, that's what a trainer's job is. You do everything you can, and then you got to send them out there. And remember, he was a champion jockey in his own right. He run, he won, won this race, excuse me, on Miesque in 1988, a brilliant ride. He, he might be one of the best grass riders in the history of France, so, you know, this is, this is a multidimensional guy. Formulator. On Courageous Cat, who has been uh, half interest, has been purchased by Will Farish to stand at Lane's Inn Farm because of the pedigrees. By Storm Cat is Dam Tranquility Lake, grade one winner of nearly $2 million. Half brother to aftermarket. That's uh, the formulator fact. Gio Ponti, second choice at 5 to 1. An American champion who meets up with Goldakova again, ran second to the great mayor a year ago. Will history be made here at the Breeders' Cup? Can she do it as Goldakova tries to become the first four-time Breeders' Cup winner? And there is her groom, Terry. Remember what a scene he gave us a year ago. Sydney's candy to low. Jerry, your final thoughts? Speed comes from Sydney's candy right there, number 10, and gets stormy. Look for Goldakova, where she settles in the middle part of the race. Trevor, moments like this don't come along often. History on the line with Goldacova. Magical, magical moment. And of course, we're always non-biased. But in races like this, you are a little biased towards the champion. Just as we were last year, this year, we are with Goldacova. If she can pull it off, four straight Breeders' Cup wins, that would be fantastic. Turalua comes in. All set for the TVG mile. Gil sent on their way in that TVG mile, and Goldakova broke beautifully. She obviously doesn't want to go for the lead, though. She leaves that to get Stormy, who strides up alongside of Geronimo. Goldakova's right there at the rail, though. Only two lengths off the leaders. On the outside, Sydney's Candy's right with them as well. Compliance officer is caught wide into the turn. Mr. Commons is right in there. Courageous Cat is going right up alongside of Goldakova. Strong Suit is racing back five off them with by word. Here's Gio Ponti, about two and a half lengths behind Goldacova and traveling nicely at the rail. Then we come back to Zoffen, he is back third last, been followed then by Court Vision and Turalua, as usual, far back early. Turalua, those only eight lengths off the leaders. So they tightly bunched as they have a half mile left to run. Get Stormy on the inside, Geronimo is right there, Sydney's Candy on the far side, Compliance Offer Extreme outside. Then it's Courageous Cat, let's see, here's Goldacova, tucked in beautifully. She's poised to pounce if she can find room. Goldacova, white sleeves at the rail, two lengths off them. Then Mr. Commons, by word behind that, Gio Ponti patiently ridden. Gio Ponti just needs somewhere to run, Turalu last. At the top of the lane, can Goldacova find somewhere to run? White cap right behind the leaders. Geronimo, Sydney's candy, Goldacova's hooking out. Goldacova's hooking out, and here she comes now. Turalu, the gray on the extreme outside. Goldacova, Turalu, court vision's running a huge one. Gio Ponti late. It's Goldacova in the race of her life. Turalu, court vision. Court vision gonna outrun her. Turalu on the outside. Oh! They hit it together, too close to call, court vision, Turalu an inch in it, Goldakova, what a magnificent run, she almost got there, but Goldakova finished up third in a valiant effort, and Gio Ponti once again right behind Goldakova in fourth. Turalu and court vision in a photo in front of of gold to Kova, but I think there's going to be a lot of cleaning up to do here with the stewards after this one. Yeah, this got kind of messy in the stretch. Uh, Olivier Pellier aboard gold to Kova, hunting for room behind the wall of horses, made a bit of a right hand turn and shutting off opening verse, I mean, uh, uh, um, Courageous Cat rather, and Patrick Valenzuela. These the two photo. are 39 to 1 and 64 to 1. Tour oh. Allure the Gray is the 39 to 1 shot. That, that's too close to call. What do you think? Boy, oh boy, I think it may have been inside. I think it may be court vision. You watch. Watch the nose on the inside horse. Court vision here as Toralor was surging on the outside. But watch the head bob and the nose of the inside horse, the nine. Wow, so close. That is a thrilling finish in what was a wild stretch run in the mile. Goldakova defeated here 
her chance for history, it goes by in her last race. She obviously has lost a step, uh, and it's almost a good thing that she didn't hit the finish line first, because imagine what the stewards would be faced right now with, with having to take her number down. Yeah. Julian, what do you think? Did you win? Take care of it, very, very close. <laughs> well, when, when the rider, usually as a rider, you can tell, uh, especially when you're that close in proximity, but it, it, it's like a, a nostril here, so. There's, Wait, uh, Rob. <laughs> there's been one dead heat in Breeders' Cup history. Breeders' Cup turf, High Chaparral and Johar, Johar in 2003. You can hear the crowd reacting time and time again as they show the replay on some of the monitors here in the TVG Breeders' Cup mile where all the attention was on Goldakova, but Court Vision and Torlor provided a thrill, and there is an objection. So right now, the tote board here at Churchill Downs reads objection. We knew this was coming, and it says objection. Please hold all tickets so the stewards are going to have to do some little CSI right now on this race. And it's an objection with the asterisk on the tow board next to the number one gold Kova, the one that uh, that unfortunately caused the interference there on the stretch. Well, and that is the look. We have a camera up there in the stewards room as they will be looking through various angles here of the mile. But it was clear as day that gold Kova came off the hedge and into about the three path. And now we are joined by Robbie Alvarado, who was the horse on the inside nine who is being placed up top at 64 to 1. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Your third you, Breeders' Cup win. Yes, sir. Thanks. Uh, this horse has never won a race on this turf course. Many I've, tries. I've him a couple times. He's gotten beat, but today I lose his day. And he deserves this. But Court has been doing so good lately. An old man, he does his job, and that's it. 64 to 1. Yeah, I mean, I guess he exceeded the expectations of everyone in the crowd. Were you aware where Govacola was trapped in behind horses? When Last year, I followed her, and this year she was a little further in front of me, so I couldn't really tell where she was, but I didn't want to take a chance today, so I swooped around everything uh, after the incident earlier, five weeks of a mile race. I swooped him out, he took off, and he held him up. Congratulations. Congratulations, Robbie. That is Robbie Alvarado, the jockey on court vision as the stewards are looking over the objection, but this is the photo, and wow. you do see that nose on the inside of Court Vision just in front of Tor Allure. Meanwhile, let's go back and look at the ride of Goldakova, Jerry. You can see her uh, with the one on, on the right shoulder of Olivier Pellier. He's already pushed out now. He, just before that, we're going to get back to that and show you, but he had to force his way out to the right to, to get running room in order for her to even have a chance to win. But you can see here, she's kind of a little bit more flat than she used to be and just can't hold off Tellier and Court Vision. Here we go, you see her isolated left circle. She's going to force her way out a little bit right here. Oops, Patrick Valenzuela had to snatch up on Courageous Cat. And that's, that's probably gonna come down. Nick Luck is standing by with Freddie Head, the trainer of Goldacova. Freddie Head is with me just walking down the track. Freddie, mixed emotions, I would imagine, at present. Farewell to a wonderful heroine. She couldn't quite do it today. How did you read the race? I think the mileage, you know, and the years have taken their toll. She looked like she was going to win, and she just, um, she died out the last one. You don't think it's anything to do with her having to angle out for a run? No, I think we had a good run. I haven't spoken with Olivia yet, but... Uh, I think we had a good race. You must be very proud. I'm very, very, very proud. Very proud. Freddie, thank you. Janine? I'm standing here just chatting with Olivier Pellier. He's, he's talking me through the race. Olivier, turning for home. Tell us what happened. She is coming in the last race. I have no place. Like, uh, I have not really the place to go. I just wait a little bit. Then the horse is moving on the outside. And I move uh, with, with him. But then have a good acceleration. And then you just uh, continue. Did somebody yell behind you? But he helped for uh, when we start. He bumped me and he pushed me on the rail. But uh, he's uh, all, the, all the way, you know, when he scream, after, uh, you know, no, when he start for scream and he scream until the end, uh, for you is like a normal. A <laughs> normal race. Last time you get to sit on the great gold Jacoba yeah. for you today. I'm very, like, uh, uh, you know, this is this in the yeah, emotion because uh, the feeling now is finished, and now we go to the to the stable, and uh, but uh, I hope for next time the ride the, the baby. Well, congratulations and thank you for all the thrills that you and Goldakova have given us.
Meanwhile, the stewards are trying to figure out where to place Goldakova, I assume, Randy. When there is a disqualification, uh, the rules of racing say you have to place the offender behind the horse that she interfered with. In this case, Goldakova interfered with not just Courageous Cat. There was a bit of a chain reaction to the outside of Courageous Cat as well. But I mean, a lot of stuff was happening, a lot of moving parts here, but I think Courageous Cat almost pulled up, so I, I believe he was last, uh, so she would have to be placed behind him. Well, oh, this is just, you know, a stunning development here. The fact that Goldakova lost, the fact that they're seeing where they're going to place her after the objection, the fact that we have a 64 to 1 winner here in Court Vision, which once we see these prices go official, that will be the second biggest payoff in the history of the Breeders' Cup. 28 races, 28 years. All these races, this is going to be second only to R. Khan, who Jerry Bailey won in 1993 in the Classic that paid $269. This will be the second biggest payoff on a $2 winning ticket, Court Vision. Court Vision had been previously beaten twice by Goldakova. He tried Goldakova in 2009 at Santa Anita, fourth by a length and a half. Tried him again last year here, fifth by two and three quarters lengths. You know, I was scouring the, the past performances, looking at his record at Churchill Downs, and I point out he never won a race on this turf course <laughs> until now. And the stewards are going oh, that's stunning. with no change. Goldakova will stay third. So it's 9 13 1 5. Court vision in a photo finish over Tour Allure. We'll give you those prices when we return. Welcome back to Churchill Downs, where they are still buzzing after the TVG Breeders' Cup mile, where the great Goldakova has been defeated. Look at that crowd in the grandstand working our way over towards the clubhouse. They waited to hear what the stewards would say. We had a photo finish that needed to be decided, and then, Jerry, they also had to decide what to do with Goldakova after the objection. Well, it's hard for me to imagine that this filly, as great as she is, wasn't disqualified. After over 30,000 trips around this racetrack, I'm telling you, she fouled Courageous Cat. And I mean, I'm a fan of hers, and I, I don't want to see her disqualified, but she, she impeded another horse. Stewart's, more than one horse. Stewart's coming down on the side of international relations, I think. They kept her third. The photo finish was between Turlor on the outside and just on the inside. Look at that nose of court vision and Robbie Alvarado. So, as I told you before the break, when this thing would go official and you saw the prices, your jaw would drop. This is the second largest payout in the 28-year history of the Breeders' Cup. That's what happens when an overwhelming favorite takes the money, loses, and then a long shot comes in. Court Vision, 131.60 on top of Toralore, the trifecta with Goldakova holding on to that third spot, almost 10 grand. The exacta, $1,979. For the winner circle presentation, let them start celebrating. The TBG Breeders' Cup Mile 2011 has been won by Court Vision, a pari mutual shocker. For owner B. Wayne Hughes, who joins me second to my right. To my immediate right is Patricia Wakecraft, Mr. Hughes's partner. And to my left is Stephen Byrne, the president and chief executive officer of the television gaming network TVG. Stephen. Nick, we say a fond farewell and au revoir to a great champion in Goldakova and congratulate a new champion in Court Vision. Well done, many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so Mr. much. Mr. Hughes Thank and you. Patricia are going to take the Breeders' Cup statue. A wonderful moment for both of you, and you only purchased this horse in August, Mr. Hughes, to stand at your Spendthrift Farm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, right now, we have to thank Dale Romans, uh, who did an unbelievable job in the short time he had the horse, and Robbie, uh, who I can't say enough about. So, yeah, he'll, he'll go to spend. he's actually going to Canada, where all the good stallions are on their way to. And Patricia, perhaps your best place to tell us what this will mean to Wayne. And when you get home this evening, you've got time to reflect on it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We're going to be partying late to the night. <laughs> Fantastic. Many congratulations to you both. Best of luck with him as a stallion. Court Vision, the new TVG Breeders' Cup mile champion. Joe? What a stunner. Court Vision. You see Robbie Alvarado right there. And what a year for Robbie Alvarado. The disappointment he had 
on the other big day of racing here at Churchill Downs when he thought perhaps he was going to have the mount on Animal Kingdom, but it went the other way. He lost the mount that week. It was injured. Johnny Velasquez goes on to win the Kentucky Derby, and then he gets this moment back here under the Twin Spires. The highs and the lows of thoroughbred racing. And this He's is experienced them all. One of the all-time highs for Alvarado as it was a stunning victory. Obviously, he's had the greatest success you can have 